Hello and welcome to another Build a Soil product highlight video. Today we're going to be talking to you about craft blend. And we have a lot of educational videos. This is just a sales video where we're going to educate you on how you might use this product. And today, like we're going to do in all of our products, I want to go deeper. I want to tell you the story behind craft blend, how it started, why we make it, why our customers like it. And I think that if I were to share that with you, you'd feel more like I do about the product, understand why it's of such good value. Behind the scenes, see what a pain in the ass it is for us to make this product, because it's high quality, but it's not easy. So let's get started. Let me show you what it looks like. So you have some visual on it. And arguably, these are some of the rarest, most expensive agriculture ingredients on the market. They're all organic, and there's minerals, and there's broken up sprouted seeds, and there's crustacean meal, and I'll go over the list with you. I'll read them, but there's 15 ingredients in here that are mixed. And we wanted to create a balance of NPK that had more phosphorus than potassium. In the living soil, a lot of times one of our weaker links is keeping the phosphorus levels higher. And when we add a supplement, we want it to be well-rounded and balanced. We want it to have a little bit of everything. The last thing we want to do is just add nitrogen, like the living soil way is to be healthy. So this is more like having a protein bar or a protein smoothie that instead of having like just one ingredient has everything in there. I'm talking the mushrooms and the vitamins and the berries and like everything for your body. That's how we treat the soil. And so 15 ingredients with really good sourcing and a balance of NPK that's not one-sided creates one of our best amendments for all purpose use. Most of our customers will use this to re-amend their soil, to top dress with, and also to make teas with. We'll talk about all of that. My favorite way to use this is to use this as my way to mimic nature. What I mean by that is nature has a lot of fertility in the mulch layer. Since we can't just put 10 years worth of nutrients into your soil and just grow back to back to back forever without having any concern for nutrition, that'd be like having a baby and just feeding it once until it's 18. It needs to be done every day. And for the busy lifestyle in organics, we've bypassed that by having larger containers and a mulch layer of steady delivery of nutrients. So what I like to do is I'll sprinkle the craftland on the mulch layer of my soil, in the garden, in a container, indoors, wherever you're using it. And even if you have good soil, this will start to train it that when you water, nutrients are coming in, the worms are eating it, it's decaying underneath the mulch, and all the feeder roots of your plant reach up to the food layer where it's more abundant and they start to eat it. And what happens is as you grow a plant, you're spending nutrients out of the soil and you're adding it back through the top via the craft blend, via top dress. And that keeps this perpetual cycle going where we never overdo it, but we never deplete it. And that takes adding when we take out. In a smaller container, one might top dress multiple times during a grow. In a very large container, it's much more forgiving. You could top dress maybe heavily one time. I'm gonna read you all the ingredients and I'm gonna read you the directions for use but I wanna go deeper because directions for use are like a way to tell you how you should use it. But anytime somebody gets good at something, they can use it more than just the instructions. We're just talking organic ingredients here. So let me pull up on my phone. I'll show you what the logo looks like and I'll read the ingredients to you. So here's what the new label is gonna look like. It's available online now. It's a 352 NPK from the lab. From the top down, in order on the website, it lists them all. The Thorvin Premium Kelp Meal. And kelp meals from the ocean has the whole periodic table of elements, a lot of growth hormones in there. It's been a staple for organic agriculture for a long time. And it's only 1 15th of this recipe. A little kelp goes a long way, so that's important. Karanja cake uh, from Terra Viva, it's the cleanest seed meal that we can find. It improves the soil it grows in. It has a lot of sustainable benefits and it's now being grown to replace the citrus trees in Florida. It's also being grown in Hawaii to replace the sugar cane that was ripped out of there. That means we don't have to import it all the way from India just to get it. And seed meals is where you get a lot of benefit. So kelp meal, karanja cake. Karanja's, I mean, these are rare ingredients. This is part of why Craftland is so special. Alfalfa meal, we get organic alfalfa meal and it's grown organically. Alfalfa or alfalfa, I think the way the word is the etymology of the word means the father of all foods. And it's basically the kelp of the land. It is a dynamic accumulator. It's fed to animals for various reasons. In fact, when I got goats, I thought I'd just feed them alfalfa. Turns out it's so high in sap in it and it's so nutrient dense that it's a very small portion that you actually feed of their diet. And I was blown away to find that. Next we have our build the soil calcium phosphate. Calcium phosphate is one of those minerals that when you learn about the Albrecht method, when you learn about soil balancing, calcium and phosphorus, very, very important. And a lot of times people will get these through a bone meal. 
One of our ingredients is a bone meal, it's fish bone meal, but bone meal out there in the industry is in all the organic products and it's approved for organic use. But bone meal is typically pig and cow and it's from non-organic farms feeding GMO, Roundup sprayed crops and treating them unethically. And once their waste is piled up and they've slaughtered them, they sell the waste this way, they sell the bone meal that way, the blood meal this way, it's now considered approved for organic use and people just say, oh, it's organic. It's not organic. It came from an industry we don't want to pay for. So Calfos was a way for us to bring those elements in without selling out. On the flip side, Calfos can be dirty. It can have lots of cadmium in, um, in it. And although cadmium is not a total fear, if it starts to accumulate in large amounts with the phosphorus, it's a problem. So we source two sources of Calfos that we offer and both of them are cleaner than anything we could find on the market. Next one, let's see Camelina meal. Camelina meal is a wild flax. And so if you know what flaxseed is, it's an oil producing seed. And the camelina meal, when we get it, still has all its oil in it. It hasn't been de-oiled and it has all the proteins from that. Part of why these, these high protein seed are animal feeds as well. And the camelina has a lot of special uses that people use it for, but we buy it and we put it into our soil because it's high protein and it's fully, it's really nutritious and it's not a GMO commonly grown grain, if that makes sense. So another seed meal. The next up is crustacean meal. Crustacean meal is a mixture of shrimp and crab meal. It's their shells, little bits of meat. It's all ground up and it's a waste from the packing facility. The reason why we're okay with stuff from the ocean, although the oceans are arguably getting dirtier, they're, they're, these aren't farmed crustacean. So we're not feeding them GMO corn like some of the farmed fish. We're not giving them an awful life. They're in the wild, hunted, so to speak. And I just feel better about that. There's a number of sources and different con uh, coasts that you can buy them from. We like the product that we buy. And instead of buying just the crab or just the shrimp, we get crustacean that's mixed together and it accomplishes those goals. The reason why people usually like that is it comes with calcium carbonate. That's what makes the shell. And it's also made from chitin. And chitin is what makes the exoskeleton of crab and crustacean and also makes insects and is very, very important when it comes to gardening because it's the second most abundant substance besides cellulose. And something about this chitin that creates a plant defense response because that's what insects are made of. And so there's chemical chitins that are extracted from crustacean meal to be able to sell on the open market. We just use the crustacean meal and it provides a lot of benefits right in the soil. I'm realizing this could take a while because there's so much to know about all of our ingredients. I'm just gonna keep on going though, I think it's good. Next is fish meal. Fish meal is mostly fish and there's some bone in it, so it'll have some phosphorus in it. But the fish meal provides the meat, the protein, so it's the high nitrogen amendment. And normally in organic agriculture, a lot of people would use like chicken manure or they'd use blood meal. And so for us, fish meal was a clean way of getting high nitrogen. We're not talking farmed fish, we're talking fish that are caught out in the open, in the ocean. For instance, we get organic gem fish. They're fishing a dogfish that's a highly managed population, that's clean deep waters. They separate out some of the stuff that they sell in another market. Um, they make glucosamine chondroitin and they fish a fatty bony fish. Well, all the other waste that they can't sell to a food grade supplement, they need to do something with. So they ferment it and we carry that product. Well, the fish meal is just a ground up version instead of in liquid. We put that in the soil to feed the soil microbial life and bring a lot of nitrogen into it. And that's good for replenishing the soil. Next is fish bone meal. We add triple the amount of fish bone meal compared to the other ingredients because one of the things we're hoping to get out of this is a higher level of phosphorus and calcium that'll continually replenish the parts of your soil that will deplete the fastest per every harvest that you take. And phosphorus, although it may not be part of the finished product, when you test it for what is made up in the product, Phosphorus is part of ATP. And if you look that up, that is an energy creation process. And so, although at the end of the day, your car is not made out of gas, the gas is what enables it to drive. And so for us to create the flowers, we need the fuel. And phosphorus is where energy comes from. And that's why people say you need phosphorus to grow big flowers. That's where the craft blend comes in. And here's why. In our soil recipes, we use lots of compost. In the compost, there's lots of potassium, but there's not lots of phosphorus. So Craftland helps overcome that with ingredients that we like. So let's keep going. Soybean meal. Soybean meal is very particular. We only work with very specific manufacturers that grow organically because within soybean, even arguably in the United States, if you get fully organic non-GMO soybean, there's a chance that 0.0001%, there might be a marker in there somewhere. We live in a world where it's hard to avoid dirty substances. So we do our very best to either import it or buy it from a non-GMO Oregon Till certified, like really clean source. 
and we offset it by not using as much of that. We use karanja, camelina, other seed meals instead of soy. Because when you go to the gardening store, what you're gonna find is everything that is organic, that has a high profit margin for that company that sells waste, it's soy, it's cotton, it's blood, it's bone, it's all the cheapest, worst, dirtiest organic ingredients, and we try and avoid those. But there is some good soybean meal. Those of you that have fed animals or know anything about soybean, if it weren't for the GMO side, it's an unbelievable plant with all the amino acids, everything you need to sustain life. Um, next up is Solpomag. Some of you might know this as KMAG or Langbanite. All three of those are the same word. It's sulfur, it's potassium, and it's magnesium. Now here's the challenge. We don't sell much of this except from the craft blend. Main reason why is when you do a soil test, rarely do you need more sulfur, more potassium at the same time as you need more magnesium. Sometimes you need the potassium, sometimes you need the magnesium but rarely do you need all three in the balance that this product has. So a lot of times hydro growers will use it. It comes into, it's not as heavily used in organics, but in our craft blend, what it does is we're trying to balance the minerals against all the seed meals and everything. And so what we wanted to do is have a ratio of available calcium and magnesium and sulfur really helps keep everything in flux. And so adding 1 15th into our recipe of the Solpo Mag turned out to be a very important ingredient in here. Next up, Organic malted barley. So we import, it's a pain in the ass to get all these ingredients in one place. We order from all these special places. The malted barley, like, it calls in animals, I swear. It smells so good and it's so full of life. So we have to really particularly take care of it. We get it from the beer brewing company. We only buy their organic malted barley. And when it gets in here, we open those bags and we put it in an ingredient just like it was a fertilizer, even though we're talking a food grade product. Next, you're gonna see volcanic tuff. That is Montana Grow volcanic tuff, and it's really high in silica. The reason why we add that is silica can help mitigate the uptake of heavy metals, has a ton of benefits from stronger plants, heavier yield, and also to fighting off pests. So most of the earth is made from rock and ground up weathered material, and that is high, high in silica. And for a long time, silica was found in all the plants, but they didn't say it was a necessary nutrient for growth, like nitrogen. But if it's in every plant and they're literally eating the rocks, I think it's an extreme benefit. And the more research you do on silica, silicon, silicilic acid, it has huge implications to agriculture and it's very important. So the rock dust that we put in here has silica, but the volcanic tuff from Montana Grow that we put in here is low, low, low heavy metal, very clean and super high in silica that's plant available. Uh, next, I've mentioned this a few times, micronized basalt. We carry a basalt that's in our potting soil that is more of a, it has little granules in it and it has the fines. I like that for soil because it has all the textures. But when I'm putting something in a top dress, I want it to have as much surface area and be as finely ground and as premium as, as possible. So we get our Blue Ridge Meta Basalt from Rock Dust Local by the truckload and we take this micronized flour of a rock dust and we put it in here. And the reason why is that's what the earth is made out of. Basalt is a volcanic material. It completely encapsulated the Grand Mesa, which has 300 lakes on it. It's like a jungle up there here locally on the Western slope. So when I think of basalt, I think of abundance. And that's how nature remineralizes. Volcanic flow creates fertile soils. We take the basalt, some of the best in the country, and we put it in here to help remineralize your soil and keep it a truly living soil, not just something that's hydroponically grown. This has to be in ground up rock and dirt and compost like a real plant would grow in. Next, we have gypsum. Gypsum is one of the most important ingredients that we add. Uh, gypsum is calcium and sulfur. And although calcium and sulfur are very specific, it's very cost effective. And what we've realized within potting soil is that because it's not ground up rock and because plants really like calcium, getting the calcium right is game changing. It's just one of the most important things they're in. The other reason when you understand soil testing, calcium has to be the highest. What's left over is for the others. If calcium's too low, the others occupy too much space in the soil and will magnetically charge and be out of balance. So we really need to get calcium right. And sulfur helps break the magnetic bonds of other nutrients and replacing it with calcium. So in a recipe where you might have too much potassium in the compost, if you load it with gypsum and you have it right, this recipe will now work properly because calcium's now shot up higher than the potassium and now it's at least in balance where the plant can operate. I could talk all day about gypsum, but just know that gypsum, calcium, sulfur, very important ingredient. It's already in here and it's in balance. And then last but not least on the list is oyster flour, oyster shell flour. We used to use a lot more oyster shell flour. It is calcium carbonate. You can just get lime, but oysters from the oyster shell. So that comes from aragonite, 
that was a mineral decomposed by the ocean, and that is floating, and then the oysters grab it and then create their shell out of it, and now they're calcium carbonate. So it's like purified aragonite calcium carbonate from the ocean. And the reason why we did it is because there was a huge mine of it that they were digging out and selling for all the chickens and everything you can think of. All the chickens, their shells are calcium carbonate. They get it from the oyster, and their feed, normally they would just be getting it from the dirt. So oyster shell was common, we could get it, and it provides calcium in a very organic way. The challenge is, is it's, it's carbonate, which can then bind with calcium. So once the biology makes it available, too much bicarbonate can start to become issue, especially when you have dirty water. So we like to use gypsum and we like to use the calcium carbonate and together they create a superior calcium source. That's why the craft blend has so many different sources of ingredients. It's to create those results that we're after. So those are the ingredients. I could obviously talk all day about that, but let me give you a little breakdown on why we started making craft blend, where it came from. And I think that'll wrap it up pretty well. So I had a buddy, still a good friend of mine. Um, life's gotten a little busy. We haven't seen each other as much, but his last name's Kraft. And he said, hey, he was, he's a great grower, always has been. And he would buy a lot of ingredients from us. And he, he would work with a lot of our original recipes and he wanted to encourage me. And he's a grower and he wants to try new things. So he was always trying all the soil stuff. And what we would do is we do a soil test on all of his soil from a season in a greenhouse and then mix it all back in a pile. We'd get the soil test back and I'd bring a whole bunch of stuff and we'd put it in the soil. And he realized it pretty much worked every time we did this amendment. It wasn't really rocket science. We just had to get the job done. So he said, can you just mix all this shit in one bag and so I don't have to like go buy 50 pound bags of everything, bring them to my house and scoop them in the pile? And I thought, you know, I'm more of a single ingredient guy. I'd rather have people get the best of what they need and then know why they're gonna use it. But that eliminates a lot of people because only a few percent actually know what the ingredients are and care to use them. And I wanted to help other people do what we were doing. So I took it, called it the Craft Blend because that's his name. And I took my favorite ingredients, mixed them in a bag. And over a couple of years, it evolved um, by testing it at the lab into something that was really balanced. And so that's how Craft Blend came to be. And I gotta tell you, if I could go back in time, although I love the quality of it from a manufacturing and business owning perspective, I would cut out like half the ingredients because it'd be easier to make, we'd make more money. But I think because this happened naturally, this is the best the product could ever be. And even though it's a pain in the ass to get 15 ingredients by the truckload in here, make tens of thousands of pounds at a time without the right equipment. I mean, if it was three ingredients, I could buy machinery, but 15 truckloads of stuff all mixed together, it's just really hard on our staff to make it. So as we grow, one of our goals is to get specialized equipment that will make making this easier. But for now, small batch, craft blend made right here by hand here in Montrose, Colorado with 15 premium ingredients so that when you add something to your garden, you're getting all the diversity of nature. When you look up permaculture, they talk about adding at least 12 to 15 species of cover crop to add the diversity that'll bring in all the beneficials and really create a, a really good farm and really good soil. Similarly, building fertility through ground up organic amendments, we want that diversity, but we also want the balance that's what Craft blend, uh, blend brings to the table. I put like a half cup like this per plant, but we have a regular size bag, which you can see here is 12 pounds. We've got a bucket that's a food grade bucket that's 25 pounds with free shipping. And we've got our 44 pound bag. We like to keep them under 50 pounds because shipping above 50 gets really expensive. All pretty cost effective when you compare the pound per ingredient of sourcing all of these, it would be 10 times that cost for you to make it on your own. And that's why we feel it's a really good value for you is you get to save a lot of money without having to source 15 different ingredients. You just buy one bag and it shows up. Craft Blend weighs about 8.3 ounces per cup or about a half pound per cup. For an all around balanced nutrient tea, we use a quarter to one cup into a compost tea. And the reason why it's a wide ratio is a lot of guys using big soil would put the smallest amount just to get some of the soluble minerals in there in their compost tea. Other guys in small containers would try and up the dose a little bit to make more of like a nutrient tea. I believe having bigger soil and just trace minerals in all your watering is a great way to train the plant to know it can constantly get more, but it has most of what it needs in the soil. So I prefer to use it as a top dress. You can also reamend your soil at two to four cups per cubic foot. On our vegetable farm, the way we put it on the label is we use 18 pounds for a 50 foot bed that's 30 inches wide. And if we're growing tomatoes or anything longer season, we double that. And you can do it one time in the beginning and one time later while it's growing and our soil just continues to develop. The worms take it down and eat it, and I think it's a great way to use the product. This was not supposed to be a demonstration. Each farm is a little bit different. Most of the time, I follow those general directions of giving like a half cup per plant 
or a couple cups per cubic foot. If you have specific needs, you can reach out to our staff here. We have live chat. You can hit up support at buildasoil.com. We'll be happy to answer your question. Also, we've got the instructions for use on the website, so you can just read it there. Soon, we will put them on the bag. I know that's one of our weaknesses, and we promise to get better at it. Part of that is making these videos as well. So, like always, if you've got questions about this product, about one of the 15 ingredients that's in the product, or anything else that I failed to mention here today, please let me know. Put it here in this YouTube video so that I can answer them and learn from these. And we're also gonna use these videos to put over on our website. So if somebody's really curious about a product before they buy it, they can watch the video and understand a little more deeply about our products. So I hope that helps. If you've got questions, put them in here. Till then, I'll see you guys on the next product highlight.